And welcome back to another breaking news update. My name is Jimmy Boyd and you were watching Boyd News. I want to thank you so much for tuning in today. I'm back with some more updates coming out for the war between Israel and Hezbollah. And I've got numerous updates to share with you here today. Today's date is October 8th, 2024. It is currently 9.32 a.m. Pacific Standard Time in the United States at the time that I record this. And real quick before we get into the news, I just want to give you guys a channel update to let you know if you see any videos that have been removed over the past couple weeks. Um, that was me doing that. Unfortunately, we had to take down a lot of videos as we've had some issues with YouTube on uh, several of these videos. So unfortunately, I had to remove many of them uh, to protect the channel as we've had some uh, unexpected issues with these. So unfortunately, I'm sorry if you were trying to watch some of those and they were taken down at the time you were viewing them. But we've made some corrections on the channel. We're going to move forward and fix some of the problems we've been having. So I just wanted to give you guys a quick update on that. So let's go ahead and jump right into the news now. We're going to start with this story of Iran warning of a red line if Israel decides to attack its nuclear or oil industry. So we know that Israel is primed to attack Iran at some point. We just don't know when it's coming. And uh, we've been talking about some of the... Uh, targets that Israel could go after. Could they go after their oil industry, their nuclear facilities, uh, maybe top political leaders like Ali Khamenei here, for example, in the photo? Uh, who could be targeted or what could be targeted inside of Iran? Well, their foreign minister recently coming out and warning of, uh, of Israel not to target their nuclear or oil facilities, or uh, this will be a major red line for them. But they are also warning in general not to target them in any way or their response will be much more powerful than what they have uh, done just recently on October 1st when they targeted Israel with upwards of 200 ballistic missiles. So we're going to be discussing that story uh, starting out in today's video. And then I've also got some updates of uh, Haifa, the sit port city in the northwestern portion of Israel, coming under attack just hours ago by, I believe, over 100 rockets that were fired by Hezbollah. Also, Israeli warplanes uh, bombing targets inside of southern Lebanon to take out those rocket launching positions that attacked Haifa today. Um, and then also we had some explosions inside of Isfahan, uh, inside of central uh, central Iran, okay, in the city of Isfahan. There's a nuclear facility there and some explosions were occurring just yesterday there, uh, yesterday night. And uh, some people were speculating on X if this was the big attack coming from Israel, but looks like it was not. I've got some updates in regards to that. So let's go ahead and jump right into the news. I'm going to start out here with this uh, news article on the Times of Israel, and then we'll jump over to X, and I've got several things to share with you on there. Iran threatens to escalate if Israel attacks, says nuclear or oil targets a red line. New York Times says Israeli response to Iranian missile barrage last week will, will likely target military bases, maybe intelligence or leadership sites, but unlikely to hit nuclear facilities yet. So that's what the New York Times is saying that uh, most likely Israel won't target their nuclear facilities. They'll probably go after other targets throughout the country, but we really don't know what Israel's planning to do yet. That's just what the New York Times is saying. So we're just going to go over a couple paragraphs here. Iran warned Israel on Tuesday against attacking any of its infrastructure amid fears of possible Israeli assault on oil or nuclear sites at the Islamic Republic following Tehran's missile attack on Israel last week. We advise the Zionist regime not to test the resolution of the Islamic Republic. If any attack against our country takes place, our response will be more powerful, said uh, Iranian Foreign Minister Abbas Aragchi on Tuesday. Any attack against infrastructure in Iran will provoke an even stronger response, he added. Okay, so this was just uh, literally stated just in the last like 24 hours. This is him right here, Abbas Aragchi, the Foreign Minister for Iran that came out stating that. Uh, that, uh, you know, obviously they will respond much harsher than they did uh, just about a week ago when they attacked Israel with upwards of 200 ballistic missiles that were fired. Apparently they will strike Israel even harder if they're attacked in any way, but they did say that their nuclear sites and their oil um, and gas industry facilities are a major red line for them. So we're going to see what Israel decides to come out and do. Um, so we're going to move on to our next update now. We're going to jump over here to X now from Vicegrad24 breaking. Explosions heard near the Isfahan nuclear facility in Iran. Something is also on fire. So this was a photo that came out uh, just yesterday showing um, a major fire that had broken out over here inside of uh, Isfahan central, uh, central Iran. And we don't know exactly what it was, but I do have a report that may have been S-400 air defense systems being tested. 
and maybe uh, that's what these fires were. Maybe some of these missiles were malfunctioning. Who knows what happened here? But definitely some explosions taking place last night. We also had this report from Emily Schrader. Initial, there are reports of explosions in Isfahan, Iran, where there are sensitive regime sites. Update, regime media has denied any violation tonight of Iran's airspace by hostile aircraft. So apparently Iran coming out and saying there was no hostile aircraft in their uh, in their skies, which would mean obviously like Israel, you know, coming to attack. Because most likely if Israel does attack, they would have to use their warplanes. How else could they really attack uh, Iran? We'll have to see what they plan to do. Uh, but uh, yeah, apparently there's this video or this uh, picture here, excuse me, which is very hard to tell what we're looking at. It almost looks like this is a mountain in the background, but there definitely is a bright light right here. This could be smoke. That we're looking at uh, but definitely multiple explosions were reported inside of Isfahan uh, last night in uh, central Iran okay also for Mosin Defender Iranian media and channels are continuing to deny any kind of attack or incident in the Isfahan province if anything this was some likely some kind of military exercise at the IRGC missile base located near the Isfahan nuclear facility okay so uh, we were hearing a lot of this, that it was probably some sort of military exercise, and most likely that was the case. Uh, but many people were beginning to fear right around the time that this was coming out, that uh, this was uh, definitely Israel coming to attack Iran, but we have not had any official confirmation of that, so I'm assuming that was not the case yet. And then we finally had this update that came out yesterday evening from Iran Spectator, breaking news, Isfahan explosions were Iran testing the S-400, Iran has recently received the S-400 Triumph anti-air system. Uh, today, they tested this system in areas near Isfahan. So here's a picture of one of those S-400 systems. And we know that uh, that uh, Russia has been sending these over to Iran recently. I don't know how many of these they've gotten, but I'm pretty sure they have multiples of these in their country. And uh, Russia is definitely be uh, beefing up Iran's air defense uh, capability inside their country. And then we also know they've gotten... Uh, like uh, these uh, Iskander ballistic missiles as well from Russia. So Iran is definitely getting some pretty amazing capabilities coming from Russia recently. So most likely that was the case was these S-400s being tested. So now we're going to move on to Ozan Defender once again. Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu is currently holding security consultations with several ministers and defense officials at the IDF headquarters in Tel Aviv. So this just came out this morning uh, just uh, about an hour ago at the time that I record this. And apparently, uh, Benjamin Netanyahu again holding more security consultations with several ministers and defense officials at the IDF headquarters in Tel Aviv once again. Uh, they've definitely been doing a lot of this recently. I know there's been lots of attacks happening inside of Israel over the last couple days, so that's probably why. As uh, I'm going to be reporting to you guys here in just a moment that Haifa came under a pretty heavy attack once again. So that could be what they were meeting about, was maybe to discuss some of the security details on the northern side of the border. So also, Vicegrad24 up next, breaking. Hezbollah issues its first major statement since its Secretary General Hassan Nasrallah was killed in an Israeli airstrike. Deputy uh, Secretary General Naim Qasem stated that they are currently without a leader. We will achieve the election of a Secretary General based on the procedures we have in our organization, and we will announce who it is. Once it happens, don't forget the circumstances are difficult and complex based on this war. God willing, it will happen soon. Looks like nobody wants the job. Okay, so uh, the Secretary General, uh, excuse me, uh, the Deputy Secretary General, Naim Qasem, recently coming out in, uh, it looks like a news, uh, a news piece here in an interview and stating that apparently Hezbollah does not have a leader right now. Okay, so we know that Hassan Nasrallah was eliminated uh, just a couple weeks ago in an, in an airstrike inside of Beirut. And then soon after that, we heard that uh, Hashem Safiyadin was supposedly supposed to take over, uh, but there was no official announcement from Hezbollah. And then he was supposedly eliminated, but actually we don't even know for sure if he was. There was lots of reports indicating that he was, but the IDF has not officially come out and said that he has been eliminated. Even today, Yoav Gallant, the defense minister of Israel, even stating uh, that... Uh, they believe that he has been eliminated. So uh, it looks to me like Hezbollah does not have any kind of top leader right now. Ever since Hassan Nasrallah was killed in his airstrike inside of Beirut uh, just a couple weeks ago. 
So uh, that was some interesting news. So Hezbollah coming out and officially confirming that, that they have no leader as of right now. Osin Defender reports senior U.S. officials have now given up on attempting to revive any kind of ceasefire deal between Israel and Hezbollah and instead have moved towards shaping and limiting the Israeli ground operation in southern Lebanon and Israel's retaliation against Iran, though concerns within the Biden administration are said to be running high as officials believe that the ongoing limited Israeli ground operation in southern Lebanon could soon grow into full-scale invasion and regional war. Okay, so this is some interesting news. I mean, we definitely haven't been hearing at all recently of any push for kind of ceasefire, whether it comes for uh, comes from uh, you know Hezbollah between Israel and Hezbollah or Israel and Gaza. Especially the Gaza ceasefire negotiations have basically disappeared. So don't expect any kind of ceasefire anytime soon. It looks like this war is going to grind on, and Israel is going to do the best they can to carry out their missions and obtain their war goals. We already know what their war goals are in the north with Hezbollah to push Hezbollah back beyond the Latani River. That way they can move their citizens back to the north side of the country. So I thought that was some interesting news as it looks like we're not going to be seeing any push for a ceasefire anytime soon. So expect these wars to continue escalating. Vice Grad 24, Suhail Husseini has been eliminated in an Israeli airstrike. He was in charge of Hezbollah's logistics, budgeting, and weapon transfers between the Islamic regime and Hezbollah. He also oversaw Hezbollah's research and development unit that is producing precision-guided missiles. So we got a picture here of an airstrike inside of Beirut. I don't know if this is the actual airstrike that eliminated him, as I saw some other reports that had different photos. So uh, take this one with a grain of salt. I don't think this is the exact airstrike that eliminated him but it looks like another uh, top Hezbollah leader being eliminated once again looks like this time overseeing uh, Hezbollah's research and development unit that produces precision guided missiles so also their logistics and things like that so very big hit to Hezbollah once again also we're going to move on now to Vice Grad 24 breaking Turkey announces that Turkish Navy will sail to Lebanon and evacuate 2,000 Turkish citizens tomorrow Okay, this is very big news. Now we've got Turkey uh, sending their Navy over to Lebanon to evacuate their citizens. That's a big sign that things are about to get much worse. I mean, we already know that Israel's pushed into southern Lebanon. I've got more updates in regards to that in just a moment. And then also we know that the Israeli Navy is going to be operating on the coastline of so uh, southwestern Lebanon as well. I reported on that yesterday. So huge news coming from Turkey. Also from Iran Observer, just in, a large number of Israeli tanks and vehicles are ambushed by Hezbollah in the Labune, Labune region. A large amount of smoke is seen rising from the area. So this was apparently a report, I believe, from al Mayadeen. This is not a video, but more just a picture. Uh, but apparently uh, there, was, there was some sort of uh, ambush on Israeli tanks once again. And we've heard of this a few times now, and the IDF has not come out and confirmed anything like this. So uh, I'm not 100% sure what happened here, but it looks like we've had multiple reports of a potential ambush on Israeli troops and some of their tanks inside of southern Lebanon. And it uh, looks like it may be in some areas the operation may not be working out so well, but in some other areas we are hearing of some advancements and uh, Israel taking over a few towns, which I'll show you guys here in just a moment. So also from Clash Report. Israel has been the largest recipient of U.S. military aid in history, receiving $251 billion uh, in inflation-adjusted dollars since 1959. Since October 7, 2023, the U.S. has spent at least, look at that, guys, almost $18 billion, $17.9 billion on military aid to Israel. This is the highest amount of military aid given to Israel in a single year. Weapons delivered include artillery shells, bunker busters, precision-guided bombs, and $4 billion to replenish Israel's uh, missile defense systems. Isn't that crazy how much money is being spent on Israel? That's why I wanted to pull this up to show you guys the amount of military spending just on Israel alone is absolutely insane, guys. Almost $18 billion being spent on military aid from the United States over to uh, Israel in just the last year. So pretty crazy to see that. Also from Suppressed News, breaking Iran's government has passed a bill to parliament which it received today titled The Plan for Development of the Nuclear Industry. So I was hearing lots about this. I tried to research it and find some articles. I couldn't find anything on this, but multiple sources sharing this on X, stating that uh, the parliament of Iran apparently passed a bill to expand their uh, their nuclear industry. Um, now, 
uh, you know, is, is this the plan for developing nuclear weapons or what? Uh, we just hear that it's a development of their nuclear industry. So we'll have to see what comes from this in the coming days. But uh, definitely, th this seems to me like they could be on the verge of producing their nuclear weapons or maybe uh, heading that direction to start producing them. And who knows, maybe they already have them. We heard some reports recently, some unconfirmed reports that they may have been testing nuclear weapons. There was some, si some type of... Uh, earthquake in the central portion of Iran recently. Some people saying it may have been a nuclear test, but no official confirmation of that. Uh, so that I thought this was some very interesting news coming out from Iran today. Now we're going to talk about Haifa coming under attack. I've got one video to share with you guys here from Bliskovka. Lebanon fired more than 100 rockets at Israeli Haifa today, Al Jazeera reports. According to the IDF, some of the missiles were successfully intercepted by air defense forces. Local media called the shelling of Haifa the heaviest since the start of the war on October 7th, 2023. So yeah, what is being reported is uh, definitely one of the most major attacks on Haifa to date. Um, and uh, I'm going to have a report from Trey Yingst. He's the uh, Fox News correspondent talking about this as well. This was definitely one of the biggest attacks on Haifa, which is a key port city on the northwestern portion of Israel. So I've got a 12-second video of these Hezbollah rockets coming in towards Haifa, so take a look. Okay, so just a quick 12 second clip. We can see a lot of these rockets flying into Northern Israel right now coming from Hezbollah in Southern Lebanon. And what was being reported was soon after these rockets were being fired, uh, Israeli warplanes were immediately in the skies bombing these positions. So pretty insane. It's still continuing to happen over here in terms of these attacks. We also have a picture to share with you here from World Source News 24-7. Channel 12 Israel, a multi-story building in Kirat, Yam, and Haifa Bay was hit. So we had multiple buildings actually that were being struck inside of Haifa. Here's one of them. Uh, looks like somebody's apartment uh, unit was completely destroyed here on the top level of this uh, building. So very crazy to see that. Also, we have this report from current report, uh, Hatshot Bezeman. One of the missiles also hit the oil depots in Haifa. So this was being reported as well that uh, their oil facility over here inside of Haifa may have also been hit as we can see some smoke over here, uh, right over this facility. So I don't know if there was some uh, something that may have been hit beyond the facility that could be on fire. It's really hard to tell. From this picture, but according to current report, uh, this one of their oil facilities may have been hit inside of Haifa as well. So also from Trey Yinks now, this is the chief of foreign correspondent for Fox News inside of Israel. Uh, that was definitely the, the largest Hezbollah barrage to target Haifa since the start of the war. Multiple Iron Dome positions were working to shoot down the rockets. Okay, so that was what Trey Yinks was sharing, stating that it was definitely a very big attack. And then I've also got video footage of him from Haifa talking about 100 plus Hezbollah rockets raining down on Haifa. So we've got a 33 second clip of Trey Yinks giving us an update on Haifa and what happened over here today. So take a look. More than 100 Hezbollah rockets were fired toward Israel's third largest city of Haifa. There were many different Iron Dome batteries around the port working to intercept the incoming fire. The first barrage was 85 rockets. We do know that some of those rockets slipped past slamming into this major population center. We are watching Israeli media right now and there's damage to multiple houses, at least one injury reported. Again, that first barrage, 85 rockets. And in the distance, we can hear Israeli jets striking Hezbollah positions in Southern Lebanon. More than a hundred has. All right, so you heard that right. 85 rockets just in the first barrage. And we heard uh, upwards of like 100 to maybe 135 rockets that could have been fired over here into Haifa. So just imagine living here and having to deal with this. I just reported a couple days ago of a uh, major attack inside of Haifa as well. There was like some heavy rockets that were fired from Hezbollah. And I think two or three of them landed inside of the city. We had several people that were injured in these attacks. Some intersections that were destroyed as well inside of Haifa. So uh, this is definitely a city that has been targeted quite a bit over the last like month, month and a half. Um, and it uh, looks like it is getting worse every single day over here as we had well over 100 rockets just today fired on Haifa. So now moving on to open source intel. Breaking the IDF now has full control of the Lebanese village of Maroon al-Ras, which Hezbollah has been using as a base for launching anti-tank missile attacks on Israel. 
So we pulled up this photo for you. Uh, there was video footage actually of Israeli soldiers putting up one of their uh, flags here on the top of uh, some, looks like some temple mount or something. I'm not sure what this is. Uh, maybe somebody's property over here. But uh, yeah, apparently they have full control of one of these villages on the border. And I have a map here that shows exactly where. Vice Grad 24 breaking. The Israeli army has taken the village on Maroon Al-Ras in southern Lebanon. And we've got this map. So looks like they have pushed in uh, pretty far into the uh, into southern Lebanon's territory. This is the town of Maroon Al-Raz. And then I noticed also that uh, he noted a uh, city over here, more on the uh, eastern side of Lebanon, close to the border of north uh, northeastern Israel. Looks like uh, this may be another town that may have been captured as well, uh, called Adaise. Okay, so I'm not sure if this one was actually captured, but uh, according to this, uh, this map, it's a possibility that maybe this town was also taken by the Israelis. So we do know for sure the Israelis are inside of southern Lebanon, um, and they have been able to successfully push in. We've uh, shown some video footage recently of the IDF operating inside of southern Lebanon in multiple towns as well. So some huge news in regards to that. Finally, I've got one last thing to share with you here from Vicegrad24 breaking. Two boys aged 12 and 17 detained after explosion near the Israeli embassy in Copenhagen. The explosion happened just a few days after the three, after three Swedish citizens aged 15 and 19 were arrested for throwing two hand grenades at the Israeli embassy in Copenhagen. So um, I believe this is tied to that report that I showed you guys yesterday. As we heard of more explosions near the Israeli uh, embassy in Copenhagen, Denmark, once again. Now, I believe this is the second time in just the last like week or so that this uh, Israeli embassy has been targeted and we had some explosions here. It looks like we got a photo of what uh, appears to show major damage to this building as some sort of explosive was used over here close to the Israeli embassy. I'm not sure if this is the Israeli embassy uh, that we're looking at here, but uh, definitely explosions were reported next to it. Um, and if it, this was the Israeli embassy, pretty crazy to see this as, uh, as it reported here as well. There were some explosions recently, just about a week ago, as people were throwing hand grenades at the Israeli embassy. So this shows, again, uh, that definitely Israeli embassies are being attacked in multiple countries around the world. Um, and uh, definitely appears to be a hot spot in terms of attacks. And then we also heard that in Sweden as well, uh, that their, uh, their Israeli embassy was shot at. Okay, so Apparently somebody was shooting uh, some live fire rounds at one of the embassies over there, one of the Israeli embassies. So uh, this was another update in terms of the report that I showed you guys yesterday. So it looks like we had uh, two people, two boys actually, that were arrested in connection to this attack that I reported on yesterday. So that that's going to be it uh, for the updates today though, guys. I appreciate you hanging out here with me today. If you got something out of this update, please smash that like button. Also, if you enjoy my content, please consider subscribing down below. Hit the notification bell. That way YouTube can notify you with that. Hope you all have a great day. Everybody take care and God bless. And we'll see you in the next one.